How's it going, guys? It's me, Domo, of the Domo Talk Anime Channel, here today, and I have calmed down from my... <laughs> not technically, I haven't technically calmed down. I'm still kind of freaking worried and sad right now. I've sort of calmed down from my epidemic of the first part of the Charlotte theory discussion thing. So this is part three, or part two and a half, or whatever I want to call it later on in the future when I edit it, but... This video, after seeing the possible theory of Ayumi's death in episode 6. Now, this video is going towards some of the stuff that I missed in my first theory discussion video. Some of the unanswered questions and um, just questions that still remain in this episode that I discovered when I was re-watching the whole anime, like 1 through 5, once again. So, time to go get started. So, the first theory or question that everyone is having their minds on is the thing of Ayumi and her death and her powers or whatnot, right? But I'll leave that till the end so I can gather my thoughts on that. And I mean, if you watched the first part, then I probably talked a lot about it. So, a lot of the things that I noticed when I was re-watching the whole anime of Charlotte, episodes 1 through 5, is that I kind of miss a lot of key di dialogue stuff or things I just didn't pay attention to that much a lot. And one of the very first things that um, caught my eye was in episode 2. Episode 2 was the very first time that you went out to go and um, get, go help, go go to work with the student council. They found the archery guy with photography. And then afterwards, um, you goes with Tamori to go see her brother. And on the way to see her brother, there's just like this whole conversation where we get to know about Tamori and... Her whole backstory and her brother, how she was poor. It's like her family was in a financial crisis with the brother. They all transferred to a school. Like the mom was confronted by people to um, go join this school, right, where they would test their abilities and research them, right. And um, it was interesting when I re rewatched it a second time. So basically, apparent like. There's a school, or like some kind of pro boarding school, as they called it in episode 2, if you all remember that, when I was talking about, um, with her mom and brother. They, they transferred to this boarding school for their, to basically analyze their powers, and we saw that when, um, after normal classes, Nal would get, like, in the machines and, like, be tested on, like, data and stuff, right? Whereas, on the other hand, the brother was being tested on by the scientists, and he was like, you know, in pain and tortured and whatnot. So and then eventually now discovers what happens to her brother, right? And she leaves the boarding school. She quits the boarding school. She just leaves. And, you know, that was something I didn't think about a lot until rewatching it. So she left this school that where people, scientists are trying to analyze her powers and all of Tomori's friends were planted there. They're fake by the scientists to, you know, be with Tamori and keep her away from the brother. What was really interesting afterwards is that when she says that she left the school, she met someone that she could trust and that she or this person helped her get back on her feet and eventually became who she was now, like in the school, in the student council, etc. Now, the question is, who is this person that Tamori trusts so much? Is it like an adult figure or, you know, we haven't met this person yet so far that I know of. And this caught my eye a lot, really, because of um, the opening. And the opening um, the opening really um, catches my attention. If you keep watching the opening, like, five times in a marathon of the anime, you I noticed some things, and the first visual I'm going to show right here is um, this group of people that you actually can't see because I need to full screen it. So this here, these group of people in the opening, and lots of people have already seen this probably in the opening, but um, what caught my eye after doing all this extensive watching and research, right, is that we assume that this person who helped Tomori after she left this school of scientists trying to study their powers is someone, like, you know, really old, right? He's, like, someone older than Tomori. He's, like, I don't exactly know how this relates to it, but the person in the middle of this picture here, 
he's apparently like holding a can. And you can't really see. Um, you, if you watch the opening, and you'll see you'll see it in detail. You can't see it here, but he's like holding a cane of some sorts, like he implying he's of some sort of like old um age. And he has these other people with him. Must look like they look like students. I'm pretty sure because of their uniforms next to him and. What I heard people on the internet talking about about this whole bunch here is that these are people with powers too as well and that they are going to fight with the student council who um I mean I don't know it's it's a speculation it's just you have these group of people here who we know nothing about it's all in the intro and I mean, since episode 6 hasn't come out yet, I'm just assuming that we'll find out who these people are real soon, and that um, we will find out who this person is. Because I think this is this person in the middle here is the one who is this person that Tomori speaks of all the time, like the one that helped her out when she left the school. It just kind of makes sense. And like, if you play the video, if I play the video right now, you'll get a glimpse of... Him and his like bluish eyes. I'm assuming his bluish eyes. I'm gonna play it for a sec. Right there, see? Oh wait, that doesn't look anything like old. Okay, never mind. Maybe not. Who knows who this person is? We don't know who this person is. But that's one thing that caught my attention in this whole anime because in episode two of Charlotte, we essentially get more um that's the episode where we get more knowledge and more background of this whole setting between people who can use powers, the scientists, the researchers. And everything like that. That's like the only episode where we get this research. After that point, episode 3, 4, and 5 was just finding a new person with a power and their daily routine, right? And also sort of character development for everyone. So that is what sort of caught my eye in this part here. Um, next, I really want to talk about more of what I found early on before the anime came out when like anime key visuals of the anime, like trailers of the anime were coming out. And I've seen this visual around before, and probably everyone else here has also as well, but, you know, I am just looking at it now, thinking of the perspective of theor theories and hypotheses, right? So, this visual has been released for some time now, right? And in this visual, we see two people standing in the middle of the corridor, the hallway, right? Um, one... We don't exactly know who these people are, right? But what I'm thinking right now and what many people have decided or is that this person here in the bottom who's crouching down behind this man is um, you. And it kind of makes sense because... Or, you know, it's there's the evidence that people say is that if you look into this picture and you'll... You could find this um, on Google. I just typed in... Charlotte anime visual right and you can find it anywhere if you look in his eye his eye glows yellow and Everyone in watch Charlotte has seen you use his power his eyes glow yellow when he uses them right? He's like Whoosh, or something like that and the hair is sort of similar so you know It could possibly be him But we don't know exactly where this is or who this man is and this brings up the other thing that I totally forgot about um, in the anime is in episode 5 and 2, I believe it's 5 and 2, where you starts to remember past memories of him and Ayumi, and that supposedly there's this third person there, like some sort of older figure, like an older brother of some sort, that's been there with him, but he doesn't remember who this person is, what he looks like, or who he is at all. Or just, we you know, we don't know who he is. And... That actually makes a lot more sense that this person could be him and his eye color glows sort of like a bluish purple. Just like the man here in the opening frame when the people standing in the opening. <laughs> I just said opening class. Yeah, so I don't know who this person is. We don't know who this person is. And one of the bigger questions is like, what is this place that they're going in? And if you look in the right here, it says A floor. This could possibly be some sort of detention cell or some kind of holding facility for people with super, with uh, um, special abilities like um, 
you or this man here. And another fan theory that I've heard of is that since you doesn't remember this person or Ayumi doesn't remember this person either, and that theory is that this person here in this uh, photo or the person that you knows, his he has a special ability and his special ability is to erase memories. And that is, you know, technically possible because uh, you doesn't remember this person at all and Ayumi doesn't know anything that about this at all either so there is that that is one of my more bigger questions going on right now on the fact that episode six and our freaking preview now okay now we can start talking about episode six after i've calmed down and talked about other stuff episode six i don't know i don't know why why they gotta do this to us but episode six Let's look at some things. Let's let's look at it as perspective. Why would Ayumi have to die? Why would she have to die? Besides the fact of story development and freaking making us cry like hell. What could possibly make her die in the anime that sort of advances the story a lot? So I can't I can't I don't want to talk about it. It's just so freaking I don't want to think about it. Okay, so we all know that the siblings in this anime have higher chances of sh having special abilities throughout the anime. We've known that already, right? And most likely, we all, everyone assumed that Ayumi would get some kind of special ability, but we don't know if she actually did have an ability or not, or whether she did, and she's going to get it in the next episode. What a lot of people are theorizing is that people think that this power is somehow killing her in the inside and that or like it's just gonna kill her in general we don't know what this power is or we don't know what sort of power will kill you but i mean you have the power to teleport but not stop and you have the power to fly in midair right so and the powers have imperfections i forgot about that the powers are all imperfect so ayumi's power could be her imperfection and that causes her to kill her oh my goodness i'm theorizing about how she dies i don't want to do that all right i'm getting to over i'm overthinking this too much so another thing about ayumi's death is these two scenes here in the anime opening where this is the scene that's like everyone's saying that oh because ayumi is not standing here she's gonna die in the next episode or she dies in the anime and i mean Myth? I don't know if you want to believe that or not, but... Myth? I mean... I don't know. I mean, if Aimee was dead, alright? let's like, If Aimee was dead and this scene was supposed to like represent her death or something, they would seem a little sad, but they're just sort of like standing there looking at the sunset. Which, I don't know, represents sadness or just... I don't know what that represents. So, there's that. The other thing I did notice, watching the opening five times is this scene here with, um, right, right here, the, um, where you see, like, this, this background, and you see just a girl standing right here, if you could see this girl right here, I think that's Ayumi, I mean, it could be someone we don't know, but, I mean, this person looks just like Ayumi, long hair, brown, long brown hair, um, could be a kid, depending on how, the distance, because, like, if you think about it, like, she could be an adult, or she could look like a child from this distance back here, you know? And why is she standing here? Unless she dies or something? I don't know. I don't want to think that she dies. I, I like Ayumi. So, I believe... What, what else is there to talk about in my theories? And this freaking teaser trailer, I swear, gosh. This episode preview... Oh my... Okay, so... I honestly have nothing else to say. Those are the questions that pop up in my mind when I think about this anime and theories and possible questions that aren't answered. Number one, who is this person that helps Tomori escape this prison and where is he in this anime? Two, who is this person that you and Ayumi supposedly have memories of but we don't know who it is? Three, who are these people in the opening of these group of people right here? I don't know who they are. Four, what is this visual, and does this take place before or after 
Ayumi supposedly dies. Because this part, this could happen after Ayumi dies and Yu goes on a rampage. I don't want to think that, but it's a possibility. Five! Will Ayumi die in episode six or will she not? I hope she doesn't because I like Ayumi. Ayumi should not die. I don't see why you gotta do this to us, Ki. So that is it for this episode. I am running out of time currently. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys on Saturday when the fateful episode arrives. But before that, I have to do Gakko, Gurashi, and other stuff. But until then, Saturday, stay tuned for episode six. If you haven't seen the trailer, I'll put the link in the description below. Or you could YouTube search it. Episode 6 is the day that we all cry for this anime. And I swear I am not ready for it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video on the Don't Talk Anime channel. So, matane guys. And I'm going to cry so bad.